Jesus is alive, he's risen. Turn to the person next to you, say he's alive. I want to talk to you today about he's risen to allow your thoughts to rise to a new level in Christ Jesus. Many people are battling with negative thoughts. There's so many negative things going on around us. And how do we deal with that? Because your life will never rise above your thoughts. That's why you have to make sure that what you are thinking upon are positive things, are good things. A matter of fact, what you are thinking in your mind will happen in time. Very quiet here. How many times do we spend so much hours every day thinking upon useless things? Thinking upon negative things. Thinking upon destructive things. Thinking upon fearful things. Christianity is based upon this truth and it's become our cornerstone. That Jesus died, but Jesus was made alive. Not only just raised from the dead back to this earth, but up to heaven. When you read John 20, 20, 21, he says to Mary, he says, do not touch me because I must still go to my Father. I have to go to heaven first. So it's important that we understand and we have revelation of this. If you don't have revelation of this, your thoughts will be earthly the whole time. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, get ready to reset your faith. Let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your tremendous grace. Thank you, Lord, for this Sunday that we can celebrate that Jesus is alive. He has risen, O Lord. And Lord, we ask that you will lift up every person's spirit to where you are. Help us, O Lord. Raise our lives to a new level, our thoughts to a new level in Christ Jesus. Let your people hear your voice upon my voice and touch and change hearts, O Lord, to take us from where we are to where you want us to be. And everybody said... Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45 says. I'm reading from the Amplified. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, an individual personality. The last Adam, Christ, became a life-giving spirit, restoring the dead to life. But it is not the spiritual life which came first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from out of earth, made of dust, earthly minded. The second man is the Lord from out of heaven. Now those who are made of dust are like him who was first made of the dust, earthly minded. And as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are of heaven, heavenly minded. And just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, so shall and we so let us also bear the image of the man of heaven. Adam was a living soul but Jesus was a life-giving spirit and the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead has risen and made our spirits alive the first work of the Holy Spirit is to regenerate your own spirit so that you can be linked up with God that's why the Bible says don't walk in the flesh but walk in the spirit Jesus became man, but he walked in the spirit. Everything he did while on this earth, he was focused upon heaven. He says, I don't do anything here on earth unless I see my Father in heaven doing it. Turn to the person next to you and say, be heavenly minded. You know, when there's so much nonsense going on in this world, so many things that can upset you, make your heart heavy, it's important to view everything from a heaven's perspective. And this is what he's saying here. He says, the first Adam, he looked at everything from an earthly point, a heavenly point, a, a earthly point. But the last Adam, Jesus, when he came, he viewed everything from a heavenly point. He says, now that we are born again, we should change our thinking and not look at things from a natural point of view, but get heaven's point of view about every situation. Aina, Amen. Who got upset this week? Let me just see your hand. Hmm. Who got angry this week? Who said something nasty this week? Hmm. Can you see the battle that we face each and every day? 
That's why you must be born again. The first work of the Holy Spirit is to raise our spirits up to a place to be seated with Jesus so that our perspective and our view can change about situations and circumstances. A life-giving spirit in a world where there's so much death and killing and stealing, we need an attitude of a person that brings life and life in abundance. That's what Jesus said. He says, I've come to this earth not to kill, not to steal, not to destroy, but I've come to bring life and life in abundance. I've come to show a more excellent way. But if you only look at things from an earthly point, a natural point, what you see, what you hear, what you feel, you'll make wrong decisions. You'll say the wrong things. Am I talking to the right people here? Look what happened on the day when Jesus was made alive. Romans 8 verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being, has freed me from the law of sin and death. This weekend is so significant for us. There's two laws working against us as mankind. The law of sin and the law of death. Jesus dealt with sin on Friday when he died on the cross. He dealt with sin. But Jesus dealt with death through his resurrection. So that's why when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, what do we do? You confess with your mouth. That Jesus died, and you confess that Jesus was made alive. Because with our mouths we made confession unto salvation, but with our hearts we believe unto righteousness. If you confess that and you believe it, that Jesus died and he was made alive, you become born again. I hope you're born again. And if you're not born again, there's plenty of opportunity today to become born again. Amen. So your life will never rise above your confession. Your life will never rise above your confession. A matter of fact, your faith cannot rise above your confession. So that's why it's very important that you take note of what you say. If you say you're a heavenly man and you're living by faith because faith is the only thing that pleases God... You have to be sensitive to what you are confessing and what you are declaring with your mouth. Turn to the person next to you say, your life will never rise above your confession. Do you know where confession starts? Confession starts with what you are thinking, with what you are believing. If you want your life to go to a new level, change your thinking. If you want your career to go to a new level, change your thinking. If you want your marriage to go to a new level, change your thinking. If you want your children to go to a new level, change your thinking about your children. Because if you change what you are thinking, you'll change what you're saying. And when you start to change what you say, then your life can go to a new level. Proverbs says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What you think in your heart, that's it. You can confess with your mouth, I'm a Christian. But if you don't believe it in your heart, righteousness is not for those who confess it, it's for those who believe it. I'm talking the gospel here today, amen? So Christianity is based upon this revelation that Jesus Christ died and that he was made alive. And when he was made alive, it gives us the opportunity for our lives to be able to rise to a new level in Christ Jesus. Confess it and believe it. If you've been here the last few weeks, you'll, you'll know I've been talking about heart. Be a person of heart. Everything that you do, do it with all your heart. The Bible says if you're going to love God, love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with everything that's on the inside. When you help, help with all your heart. When you pray, pray with all your heart. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Where does that righteousness sit? In your heart. When you confess with your mouth and you believe with all your heart. Christianity is about the purity of our hearts. 
A matter of fact, when your confession has got your heart's full agreement, that's when faith is released. We're living in a world these days where so much that people are saying does not have their heart's full agreement. Hello, my brother, so nice to see you. And you're like, you stupid, wish you were not here. <laughs> oh, oh, do you want to, you can have my seat. Taking my seat again. <laughs> How much of what you're saying with your mouth has got your heart's full agreement? Am I talking to the right people here? <laughs> How much time do you spend every day thinking about useless things? Thinking about negative things? Thinking about people that's made you angry? upset you, offended you, cheated you. The Bible says in Luke 17 verse 1, offense comes to everybody. Comes to everybody. But it's time for us to allow the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ to affect our thinking. Because when my thinking changes, my speech changes. You know what the Bible says? The more I study this, he says, you don't have an option. Make a decision. Actively move your thoughts in the right direction. Can I have one? Amen. No, I want to first think about how nasty they've been towards me. I'm going to be Christian-like and not write them in the little black book. But I'm just going to think and meditate upon it. No, no, no. Listen to what Colossians 3 verse 1 says. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing His resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2, and set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on the things that are on earth. Verse 3, for as far as this world is concerned, you have died, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. He's saying set your mind on things from above. Think about the good things. Think about things that have been resurrected to a new level in Christ Jesus. The higher things. Turn to the person next to you and say, think higher thoughts. You know, it's like sometimes you have to tell some people that are 50 years old, grow up. You cannot be 15 anymore. You have to now act like a 50-year-old. But some people, they just never grow up. Some people always just never change their way of thinking. You know what's so interesting? The world looks at the church and they'll tell us exactly how we're supposed to think. They'll tell us exactly what we're supposed to say and not to say. Am I talking to the right people? Have you ever had somebody say, you call yourself a Christian, but why are you saying this? Why are you thinking this? It's so funny that the world can tell us what to think, how to think, how to behave, but sometimes we ourselves, we don't know it. Am I talking to the right people? <laughs> I love it when people make a decision and say, I'm going to have the mind of Christ. I'm going to start thinking like Jesus. I'm going to start walking in obedience. I'm going to start walking in humility. I'm going to start walking in sincerity of heart. Because Christianity is all about the heart. Amen? When you change your, your way of thinking and you realize Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, I'm already blessed with every blessing in Christ Jesus. I don't have to go look for a blessing I can become a blessing. But when we're so earthly minded on what we need, everywhere we go, we're looking for a blessing. When you know I'm saved to save others, instead of looking for your miracle, you now can become the miracle. Instead of looking for blessings, you become the blessing. Instead of always looking for help, you start to help. Then you have the mind of Christ because Ephesians says you're already blessed with every blessing in Christ Jesus. If you believe it and you're thinking it, your behavior will change. 
That's a man of faith that can say, thank you, Jesus, for the blessing, for the breakthrough, when they've not seen it. Believing with all his heart that God has done it already. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Let me just tell you something. Your words will reflect what you're believing. What's going on in your heart, your words will reveal that. Your words will reveal whether you are thinking heavenly thoughts or whether you're thinking earthly thoughts. Jesus had two disciples that got upset with people. And they came to Jesus very spiritual and they say, we know what the Bible says. With this great prophet in the Bible, he called down fire when he was upset. Jesus, would you like us to call down fire and just solve this problem quickly? Have you ever had a situation like that? Am I talking to the right people here? And Jesus said to them, you too, you don't know what kind of spirit you have. What you want to do now is you want to kill, steal, and destroy, and I've come to bring life and life in abundance. He was saying to them, what you're doing now is you're viewing this from an earthly point of view, and what the earth, what this world would do in a situation, this is what you want to do. But heavenly thoughts are different. Heavenly thoughts wants to build up, wants to encourage, wants to help. I've not come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come to bring life and life in abundance. Amen? Amen. When your heart is full of heaven, heaven will come out of your mouth, and your actions will be filled with heaven. But when heaven is not here, oh my word. So you have to make a decision for your thoughts to go to a new level. Are you ready to take your thoughts to a new level? Turn to the person next to you say, new level in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Turn to the person else and say, new level in Christ Jesus. Yeah. I can give you a lot of points, but I'm going to leave you with four thoughts, just things that you can do to take your thoughts to a new level. Is that okay? Let me just see, who of you sometimes battle with negative thoughts? Okay. Let me just give you the good news. Everybody battles with negative thoughts. Most of the time when pastors are preaching, they're preaching to themselves. Because I also have to deal with negative thoughts. Amen. So let me give you the advice from the Word of God. Because this Word is like a hammer. Pa, pa, pa. Will destroy a rock. This Word is like a fire that will consume everything that's not of God. Amen. So number one, change your way of thinking. Turn to the person next to you say, number one, you're going to have to change your way of thinking. The Bible says in Romans 12, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So change your way of thinking. If you're always telling your children that they're naughty, they're naughty, they're naughty, you have to change your way of thinking. Parents can have one amen. I know school is starting very soon, amen, so that's why you're just holding on to that thought a little bit. Has the holiday been too long? But start to get heaven's opinion about your children and rather declare the word of God over their lives. The Bible says, train a child in the way that he should go. And when he grows up, when he gets older, he will not depart from that. Find out what God has called that child to do and help him develop those gifts. Focus on the strengths, not always on the negative things. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all, with unveiled face, taking off the mask, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. If you want to be changed into the image of God, open this word, the mirror, and start to see what the Bible is saying about you. If you are reading just things in the world, newspaper, internet, bad news, and you are being transformed into that image, Negative, murmuring, complaining, don't complain. But if you want to be positive, here it is. Amen. The Bible says a very simple thing. Seek the kingdom of God. Matthew 6 verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For you to experience that, the kind of peace that does not come from this world, you must be born again. To have a joy on the inside, though there's war on the outside, you must be born again. To experience the righteousness of God, you must be born again. These things are only found in Christ Jesus. 
Can you see how important it is to be born again, to allow that resurrection power into your life? That even when the whole world is sad, you can have joy on, on the inside. That song that we were singing, this joy that I have. Hallelujah. Are you guys with me? Number two, if you want to change your thinking, you have to start to meditate on things from above. You're going to have to change your meditation from everything here on earth up to heaven. Amen? Philippians 3. Got the right scripture here. Sorry, Philippians 4. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Amen? The Passion Translation says, So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising Him always. Amen. Can I tell you something? We are here today because Jesus didn't lose focus. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Make a decision and get your thoughts focused on things from above. Things that you can just be grateful for. Just, Lord, I thank you that you love me. Thank you, Lord, that you love me as much as any of your disciples. Thank you, Lord, that I know the thoughts that you have towards me. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give me a future, to give me a hope. Thank you, Lord, that even though I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death, that you are with me. You will not leave me. Thank you, Lord, that you stretch forth your mighty right hand. You cause the light of your favor to shine upon all my ways. Thank you, Lord, that you hold my life in your hands, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you said you are perfecting everything concerning me. Thank you, Lord, that you are in, and just start to think upon positive things. Thank you, Lord, for my wife. Thank you, Lord, for my church. Thank you, Lord, that we can still worship you and adore you and magnify you. Thank you, Lord, that we can still read your word. And just start to think upon positive things. Amen. You might have a lot of bills to pay, but you didn't get an account for your blood pressure. You didn't get an account for the oxygen that you used this month. You didn't get an account for the blood circulation that's going through your system. Am I talking to the right? I mean, there's so many things to be grateful for. Hmm? Here's give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Keep your thoughts continually fixed. So can I just tell you something? A great mentor of mine told me the one day, he said, I also battle with negative thoughts. But I've trained my heart to replace it with the word of God immediately. So when the enemy shouts, you're going under says, no, the word of God says, I'm going over. When the enemy is shouting you the tail, says, no, 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 the word of God says, I'm the head. And start to replace it with the word of God. Because the word of God has got purification power. It's got healing power. It's got sanctification power. This word is alive. When you start to declare it, it starts to change things. You know, my wife... She does great things with the band, and she put a challenge out to the band now in this past month to read through their Bibles in one month. That's a good challenge, amen? That's a lot of word. But even one of the young men took on the challenge. And I saw him in the first week, I saw him in the second week, and I can see how this person's countenance has changed. His attitude has changed, how his family has said, he has changed. Because that's what the Word will do. The Word will change you. you reading the Word, thinking you're reading the Word, but the Word's busy reading you. <laughs> because it's got the ability to discern the intents and the thoughts of your heart. To say, listen, this is bad. This is negative. This attitude is wrong. Change it. And not only tell you what's wrong, but it will show you how to do it in the right way. So take some time. Every day when you feel negative... Think upon things that are praiseworthy is what the Bible says. So number three, so it's easy to say that. No, it's not always easy. Sometimes you have to do some things actively. Number three, you're going to have to take some negative thoughts captive. Can I have one amen? So the Bible says that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Turn to the person next to you and say mighty. They're mighty. To do what? To take these arguments, these vain imaginations, these things that's making you feel you're losing your head, to take those things captive and to bring it in line with the will of God, to bring it in line with God's way of doing things, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You know, this morning when I was preparing, I wrote down here, we often disqualify ourselves while, while Christ has qualified us. Christ has qualified us through his word, but we come and we disqualify ourselves through our words. We often disqualify. God says, you are more than a conqueror. And you say, I can never do that. I will never do that. And we disqualify ourselves with our words where Christ has qualified us. He says, you're more than a conqueror. He says, you're going over, you're not going under. The resurrected Christ has become the answer for every area in your life that's become stagnant, every area that's dead. That's what Abraham believed. He believed that that which is dead can live again. That's why he was prepared to make the sacrifice, believing that God can raise the dead. So every negative thought, it's not a sin to have a negative thought. It's not a sin to have a negative. Everybody's got negative thoughts. But take that thought captive. Sometimes you're going to just have to lay your hands on your own head and say, Lord, right now, every thought, every argument, every vain imagination, I'm going to take it captive and bring it on with the mind and the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes go put it on your children's heads. Am I talking to the right people here? God has given us weapons and we're not using it. Sometimes it's just a scripture, a single scripture that God has given us. You know, when the doctors told us that we'll never have children, that was a negative word. But when I read in Romans 4, who contrary to hope in hope believed, and he became the father of many nations, he became the father of hope. When that scripture was highlighted to me, I said, God, this is the scripture. And the Lord said to me, you will have children. Your firstborn will be a girl, and you have to call her hope. And I said, thank you, Jesus, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, and he became the father of hope. I said, thank you, Lord. That's your word. And I would just declare that. I would just declare that. I would just declare that. Because there's light and life in this. It can resurrect. When something is dead and they say it's impossible for you to have children, you and your wife will never have children settled in your hearts. God says, when man says it's impossible, I say it's possible. When Jaden was born, I'm using my children. When Jaden was born, he was born premature. He was in ICU for 34 days. Turn to the person next to you and say, it seems like pastors also go through challenging times. <laughs> Psalm 27 is what God gave me for Jaden. I prayed Psalm 27 over him every single day when he was lying there. Then in Luke at the situation from a natural point of view, I would ask the doctor, I said, okay, what's happening now? What would you like to see next? We'd like to see the oxygen to go from this level to this level. I said, okay. And I would speak to the machines, I would speak to him, I would just pray every kind of prayer. But I'd go and pray and declare the word of God over Jaden. The Lord is the light of your salvation, Jaden, you shall not fear. The Lord is the strength of your life, of whom shall you be afraid? When the wicked came against you to eat up your flesh, your enemies and foes, they stumble and fell. Though an army man camp against you, your heart shall not fear. Though war will rise up against you, and this you will be confident for one thing you have desired of the Lord, that you may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of your life to behold his beauty and to inquire in his temple. What is he doing today? Yeah, he's worshiping. In the house of the Lord. Where is his happy place? Not playing rugby, not doing all those things. He did all those things and he loved it. But God spoke to him and said, worship. Worship. That's a desire of God from a natural point of view. No, you have to play rugby. But heaven's point of view, no. I know the thoughts I have towards you. I know what I've called you to do. 
Amen. So take those negative thoughts captive. The last thing that I'm just going to leave you with. Pray heaven into your thoughts and your thoughts into heaven. (laughs) When the disciples came to Jesus and they said, teach us how to pray. One that probably the magic prayer. Jesus said, pray in this manner. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. What was he saying? He was saying, pray heaven's atmosphere, heaven's opinion. What heaven is saying, let it manifest here on earth. That's what I want you to do. Do that. That's our assignment here on earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done. You're on earth as it is in heaven. Can I tell you, with the resurrection power that you have on the inside of you, whatever situation that you are facing, manifest heaven in that situation. Manifest heaven in that situation. Amen. Turn to the person next to you say he's risen. I'm going to close with this in conclusion. Let's see if I can do it just first time. Amen. Because he is risen your thoughts can rise up to a new level in Christ Jesus. Because He is risen, your thoughts can rise up to a new level in Christ Jesus. Make a decision to steer your thoughts in the right direction. Amen? Because He is risen, we are seated in heavenly places. Not here, heavenly places. Ephesians 2 verse 6 says, And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show his exceedingly riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Because he is risen, kindness towards you. Because he is risen, kindness towards all of mankind. It's so important to have a heaven's point of view about a situation. Think about Paul. I mean, we all just say, if I can just be like Paul. If I could just have the revelation that Paul had, understanding Christ on the inside of me, had that revelation. But before Paul was Paul, he was Saul. And what would we say about him? Lord, let judgment come upon him. Am I talking to the right people? But if you had the right view, oh Lord, protect Paul. Use him, Lord. Take him from where he is to where he should be. Make haste, oh Lord, to bring him from this to where you want him, so that he can start writing, so that we can have revelation. Am I talking to the right people here? Because we are in Christ, we can have the mind of Christ. Next time when you look at somebody that makes you angry or upset, before this earthly nature wants to respond, get heaven's nature. Jesus taught us a little bit about that when he said, when they curse you, bless them. When they despitefully use you, pray for them. Hmm? He said, move in the opposite spirit. Don't operate with that natural nature, the earthly nature, because that's the battle of all ages, between the spirit and the flesh. Humility and pride, good deeds and evil deeds. Self-pity, hope. Hmm? Love, hatred. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that made your spirit alive. Breathe his life into you so that your thoughts can change, so that your thoughts can go to a new level, so that your life can go to a new level. We can now start thinking heavenly thoughts. Get heaven's opinion about a situation. Heaven's opinion about South Africa. Heaven's opinion about that person that you're so angry with. That person could be a Paul. Hmm? And you calling him Saul and the Lord sees him as a Paul. Am I talking to the right people here? Hmm? Well, I think that's a simple message. Because Christ is risen, your thoughts can rise to a new level. But you're going to have to make that decision to fix your thoughts on heavenly things. To lift your eyes up. You know, an airplane, I don't know much about flying, but I remember one person teaching once, the thing that determines if the plane goes up or down, you call that an attitude. 
And when the nose is down, it's a downward attitude. And when the nose is up, it's an upward attitude. But the instruction from heaven is, get a heavenly attitude. Get your nose, get your eyes up and look to heaven and get heaven's opinion about every situation. Amen. We all battle negative thoughts, but replace those negative thoughts with the word of God. Amen. And as you replace those thoughts with the word of God, you'll see your life will rise to a new level in Christ Jesus. See you love.